use your cane for self-defense. So how to use a cane for self-defense is very simple if you break it down to these three things. You're gonna warm up first. The cane goes in one hand, the long side of the cane is gonna come out of the thumb side of your hand and your palm will face the sky. You're gonna do a small turning motion. As you do the small turning motion, you're gonna release, relax the grip. Don't release it, it'll go flying out. But you're gonna release the grip, relax the grip just a little bit without releasing it completely. You're gonna go around and around. Now from the side, this is what it looks like. My hand is just relaxed and I spin it. And what I wanna to start to do is develop some callus on my hand. Also get a feel for how it moves, get the blood flowing into the joints so you can stay safe from injury during this workout. Self-defense with a cane is very simple when you break it down to the three things we're gonna do today. It's always important to warm up properly to stay safe from injury. This is also gonna get your heart rate up, start to pump the blood, get you lean and fighting fit at any age. You can do this standing or you can do this in a chair. From this position, this basic spin, I'm gonna turn my hand over and I'm gonna come across the body almost like a slap across the face with this angle. And then I'm gonna turn my hand over on the opposite side and there's that backhand, bring it back the other way. So now turning and pulling side to side, the other hand is up, stomach up and in, abs tight, pull your shoulders back and down, breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth as much as you can. Speed it up when you're ready, but slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And your goal is to start to get tighter and tighter with this spin in front of the body. You're doing this spin not for self-defense, but so that you get stronger when you do all your basic striking techniques. You're disguising repetition through these spins. You're gonna do 30 seconds here, put it into that other hand. Palm is facing the sky. The long side is coming out of the thumb. The hand is relaxed and closed, but relaxed enough that it can spin through the hand. It's just the weight turning. Make sure the palm stays up. A lot of times when you switch to the other side, I've seen that you're struggling with this spin and it starts to come sideways and hit you in the back of the head sometimes. That will only happen if you turn your hand. So if you can really focus on that hand and keep it facing the sky, palm up the whole time. It's just this motion. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, speed up when you're ready, stomach up and in, abs tight, shoulders back and down, chin back, breathe through your nose, out through the mouth, and then over and back. Again, just think of a palm slap across the face and then the back of that hand coming back through. As you go through and back, your stomach's up and in, and you're fighting to try to get this stick in front of your body. Good morning, Harold, it's good to see you. Hopefully you guys are surviving the snow up there, the snow and the ice. I know you, I lived up there for 50 years almost. Of course you survive, you have fun, you put on some warm clothes, go outside and shovel the snow, play in the snow. Just don't let it make you stay inside too much, right? But you're coming over and back, and again, you can do the standing or sitting. This is your warm up. And we're gonna go into the very first thing I want you to know when you grab your cane for self-defense. If you're learning how to use a cane for self-defense or a combat cane, it can be this kind of cane. This is a cane master's cane. And the biggest difference between this and one of those $9 canes that you can get off of Amazon is that this part is wider for your hand. And it's not that much more expensive. The other ones break easier. I used to say, get one of those. It's a good way to start. And I still believe that's true. But if you've, you're past the starting point, Go ahead and invest a little bit of money. I always say invest your time before you invest your money. You've broken one of those other canes. The crook was too small for your hand. Go for something like this. From here, you hold it with two hands like you're gonna do a push-up. We'll say this is the threat. You're sitting in a chair or you stood up, they catch you off guard, your hands were here. You bring it here and you're gonna use this bar. Think of this as a bar against the nerves in the chest, the throat, the teeth, the nose, the eyes, you're simply going to push them back. And when you push them back with all the force you can muster in this first strike. So from here, you can practice. If you don't have something to hit, do it in the air. Add that breath. 
When you add that breath, everything goes tight, almost like a whipping motion. That's why they yell in martial arts. That's why you see the tennis pros now. Huh, huh. Remember, it started with Monica Sellis, and now the, uh, the Venus and Serena girls did it. Now everybody's doing it. But there's a reason behind it. That breath <sighs> makes everything go tight real fast. And this motion all of a sudden becomes more explosive, faster, harder because of the breath. So add the breath. <sighs> also, when you <sighs> push out, it forces you to breathe in. And if you're under attack, if you're defending yourself, you need to breathe. You have to last. You have to have endurance to win the fight. <sighs> It'd be great if one, one strength is enough. But if it's not, you got to go two, three four or more, you need to have your energy. You need to have that oxygen. So practice putting that into your breath. Now let me show you the trick to get more power, to build power. This is the home gym. I know the, the purple gym is 10 bucks a month, right? But this purple gym is even less than that. You buy it one time, it's just a band, just a resistance band. This is a medium size. Sometimes I have the red one, which is a little thinner. You can tell how much resistance it is by how thick the band gets. This is about enough for me. I go thicker than this. It's a really good workout. This is good enough though. I'm gonna take the bar in the front of my chest. Doesn't matter if it's on the hook side or on this side. I find it easier to put on the hook side and slide it here. Now on the chest, I'm gonna reach behind my back and I'm gonna grab it. See how I can turn it there, pull it up and slide that circle there. It's easier if I look what I'm doing. Watch what I'm doing. Just slide that on, slide that through there. Now, here's the key, because a lot of times when you do it, I see you have it like this, and you're like, it hurts the back. Well, I want it over your arms. It should be over the tops of your arms, and your hands can be as wide as the band, a little bit wider, a little bit more narrow, but about as wide as your shoulders. Stomach up and in. Again, do the standing or sitting. And then slowly push and start to build density in that chain. It's because you're not just doing the chest. You're doing the triceps. You're doing the forearms. You're doing your hand, your grip. Your shoulders are getting in there. And if you're standing up, you're getting your whole body's working. Your abs are working. This becomes a core workout. You're getting leaner, stronger, faster for self-defense. And you're gonna do this continuously for 30 seconds. And it's kind of like a standing push-up. And this is gonna to start to give you power for that first striking technique. I'm gonna show you that again in just a second when we get done with this set. I've got just a couple more seconds, I think. I can feel it. it feels like about 20 seconds. And then I'm gonna pop that off. Then, once you've done that once, engaged all those muscles, go back if you have a striking surface, see how much more powerful that is. If you don't have something to strike, do it in the air. Just practice over and over, 30 seconds. Get the joints used to that motion so that when you do need it, he gets all the injury, the, the threat, the attacker, you don't get any of the injury. You stay safe from injury. That's the first kind of technique for self-defense when you're learning how to use a cane for self-defense. All cane self-defense is, is a big stick with a hook on the end, and it uses martial arts principles, martial arts techniques and self-defense principles that you'll find in other styles, as it like Kali, right? Um, the sword. And in this case, just boom, shoving them off. But the difference is, you put this hard piece of oak through this nose for self-defense, or the eyes, or the teeth, or the throat, this is a force multiplier. This is that combat cane or the self-defense cane that comes from cane masters. You can see what these cost. Uh, it's first link below. And then the second link is for if you need one of those straps, you want to get a home gym and not spend the time, spend the money. Maybe you're locked in. You can't get out of the house. Get one of those bands. You can get so many workouts in. Now, let me go to the next kind of spin that I want you to do for flexibility and strength in your grip. You're gonna have one foot forward, and I want you to hold this cane up as if you were gonna defend yourself. Your principle is self-defense. Number one, situation awareness, but number two, get in a better position. By stepping back, your body becomes a small target, smaller target. Stepping forward does the same thing. The only thing to remember is to make sure whether you go forward or back, the front hand is holding the cane. 
So if I step back, I'd need to step back. This is my right. I'll step back with the left. Other hand always comes up. If I step forward, I need to step forward with the right. I like that, by the way. See how that closes the distance and you can't see me so well? You've got to navigate getting around my cane. So if this is the threat, I'm in here. And I want you from this position to drop the cane inside and in front of your nose. Goes away from you. And your goal here is to start to build flexibility. My hand doesn't open. Don't open your hand. Work on that flexibility. Once you get that, you can bring it to the outside. Notice that I bend the elbow just a little bit. I'm just dropping it to four and it's coming behind my head. Once you get that, you put them together. Go inside and outside. Now you have a figure eight or an infinity spin. Spinning end endlessly, spinning endlessly will start to get the blood flowing into more of the arm, the wrist, the forearm, the tendons, the ligaments, the joints, all of that fresh, fresh blood full of oxygen and plasma heals things up, making you stronger and healthier. It's also going to give you a better grip, a vice grip, so that that doesn't come out of your hand when we now go into the next kind of strike. And that's from this position. The first one was here. Just get them off of you. The second one's here. You had time to get in a better position. So you lift. You're starting here. You lift your cane, and you let it slide a little bit. Start here, lift your cane, and you let it slide. That's the reason I want you to do so much of this so that when you're here, you can easily do that. You don't even think about it. You're in this position. The cane goes between you and the threat. Now they have to deal with this wood. And from this position, I'm going to show you some of the strikes you can do from here. You can practice right now. The first is going to be a thrust, a thrust. I'm going to take that hard, I beat the tip off of it, the plastic, the rubber. But you can see that that's wood. And even if the rubber's there, it doesn't, that's not like a big boxing glove, right? That's not going to give much uh, protection for them for self-defense. You're not going to smash the nose, smash the teeth, smash the face, go through the throat for self-defense. From here, just create distance, right? I'm sliding up his face. That must hurt. <laughs> but you're just pushing, right? And even, imagine, you saw it slide off the bag, right? I wasn't really looking at it. But even think about that. If that's sliding up, what it's running into, that hard piece of wood, just smashing everything. Uh, good morning, Texas. What part of Texas are you... Cold, uh, icy, snowy Texas? Are you up in the mountains? Are you down by the Gulf? Are you somewhere in the middle? Up near Oklahoma? From here? I love Texas, by the way. Texas is a big, big state, right? There's so much to do, so much to see in Texas. From here, straight in. That's the first kind of... You're just creating distance. Unless you slide off his face, but you might take a nose or an eye with you, and that's okay. Central. You're a bear, frozen, right? So you're here. The second kind is an angular, angular strike, either from this side or from that side, either down or up. So you have thrusting, and you have angular strikes in this second position that you're gonna hold, second kind of self-defense technique. Then you have horizontal strikes to the head, to the body, to the legs, to that vicious animal. You have the ability to defend yourself because you have a hard piece in this case, this is oak. This is the cane master's cane. And you just bring that through. Cane self-defense is simple and basic when you keep it simple and basic. Good morning, New Mexico. From here, I didn't see if you guys got ice and snow or not. From, it looked like the whole country did. Down here in sunny South Florida, we had, it was 80, and I'm not, I'm not trying to push it in, I'm just, or like rub it in, because I'm not. Uh, I just thought it was fascinating that back where I'm from in Ohio, they got like 10, 12 inches, and it was nine degrees this morning. Down, yesterday here it was 87 degrees and humid, felt like summer. From here, a thrust, an angular strike, a horizontal strike coming through the middle, just down on top, smashing right through the forehead for self-defense, turn off their operating system. You don't know if they have a knife or not, go right to the face first, see if you can't defeat the threat before the threat's able to get to you. From here, now, Let's go back to, I want to show you one more thing that you can do with your self-defense cane and the band. And again, if you want to see what a set of these costs, the link is below. Uh, I like to do a lot of things for the chest because there's so much striking and power moves this way, right? 
but you can also, from here, we're going to wrap it again. Last time I wrapped it the other way. I guess I'm more flexible on that side, huh? You bring it through. That just pops over the top. Remember, the key is that you want the bands over the top part of the arm and not under the arm. You want to be over here. Oh, yeah, I heard about Cincinnati. Used to love driving over that bridge going into Kentucky. Hello from Ireland. Oh, good. I hope you love that cane, Sensei Emmett. Now, from here, did you get uh, Gary's, the black one? From here, I want you to shove straight, right? Because you're going to practice this. You, you ask me this every time. What happens when they grab your cane? And I say, you're going to let them have it, literally, because they're pulling this way. So you're going to go that way, take that pressure off, and then you're going to turn. So here's another way to use the band to help you with your cane self-defense. When you want to learn cane self-defense or cane self-defense for seniors, cane self-defense for wounded warriors, it doesn't matter. You might have no... Uh, physical challenge at all, you're still allowed to use the cane for self-defense. So cane self-defense, get more power in your cane self-defense techniques. You throw the band on, you push, and then turn. So now turning, their hand went from here, and then they're here, or here, and then they're here. Yeah, I'll bet that <laughs> you're not driving up to the zoo. From here, turn and push, right? From here, turn and push. From here, turn and push. One, two, three. One, two, three. Push, and then a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. When I worked at one of the schools in Dayton, uh, we used to do stuff at Seven Hills all the time. Talk about the hills, the, the school, Seven Hills. One, two, three, like teacher in service or something like that. They had such a great campus. School, some of the uh, 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 schools in Cincinnati, private schools are pretty amazing. One, two, three. The Queen City, two, three. One, two, three. And, you don't, and, and if you want, you can just do the turn at first. Just do the turn at first. Start to build strength all along that range of motion. So that when you need to, you've got the power. You've got all of the skill and ability. And you need to stay safe. Now, the last way that I want you to defend yourself or think about self-defense when it comes to the cane is holding the crook side facing the threat. Hold the hook facing the crook. A little play in words, but he's the threat, right? We'll say, we don't know if they've got a knife or not. Maybe the knife comes out. I'm going to take this. And you're going to twist it up. Yes. Drop it just a little bit. Since I am and I saw you had a new interview with uh, London Sabate. You see this, tw this twist in the wrist? That, it's just that plus this. So I'm going to pull here, and as I'm coming off the ground, snap this up. We're going to say that's the groin. He's a little bit shorter than me, or maybe this is his, maybe he's the same height, his head is here. These are his shoulders. That's his groin. I'm going to pop it straight up. So let's say you don't have enough time to respond to the threat. The threat's coming in really fast. They catch you off guard. Boom. You just lift this as hard and as fast as you can, and you can practice, you have to practice it in the air, right? Get used to it, not hitting the target, but getting stronger, getting faster. Coming up faster and faster and faster and faster. Um, I'm not going to disagree with Joe uh, Robena from American Cane Masters of Self Defense or uh, ASD. Uh, I am going to say that I would defer to what I've been reading and learning from uh, since Amy, you just bought the book. I, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> the book is called uh, When Violence is the Answer. And he's got a podcast. He's got a, what's it, since Amy, can you help me? What's his name? Um, uh, Larkin, Tim Larkin. Tim Larkin, I think, is a more, he's more experienced in the niche of real and practical self-defense. The rest of us are all just thinking what we would do, right? And I'm not, I'm not, am I saying that about uh, uh, Joe Robana? Because I don't know. I'm not gonna put words in his mouth and I'm not speaking for him. Yeah, Tim Larkin. So I'm speaking for myself. In my experience, yes, that's the best technique if, or that's the best technique, or I'm cane boxing. I'm cane boxing with thing. That would be my, 
Yeah, he's, he is hardcore. That would be, um, I, would, I, would, I would be leading you the wrong way and I would be violating every principle that I've learned about self-defense in the last 10 years, practical self-defense, if I said choose this technique or choose this technique or the number one technique is going to be this because I don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen, right? You have to respond in the moment, not react, respond. You have to be prepared to respond. So you have to ask yourself the question, what are the targets you can remove or destroy? That's the whole point. Maybe that's the, the answer. The answer is a bayonet strike or a slashing strike, slashing, then bayonet striking here, but maybe that's not. Maybe the, the answer is that you do a little elliptical kick, and you come across the body, you smash down the head, and then you rake. We don't know until you're in that situation. So the point is, the, the saying goes, techniques get you killed, principles can save your life. And the idea behind that is, don't just rely on techniques, because you don't know what's going to happen. Ask your, follow the principle. Principle number one is always the same. Principle one, number one, oh, you're welcome. I get, and, and you have to understand that I don't get a lot of support in, in doing these. In other words, it's not everybody's best choice for how I would spend my time with uh, doing this, but I'm committed. I'm committed to you. I have such a deep passion. When I started putting everything on YouTube, my passion was reignited for the martial arts because I realized teaching in person, kids getting younger and younger and younger, three, four, five-year-olds, moms bringing them in because it's almost always moms, sometimes dads, but moms bringing them in because they want a little sweet boo-boo to pay attention in the class and to stop hitting his little sister. But when it goes for self-defense or you, they, you try to teach them how to fight for self-defense, they don't want them to get hit, right? Um, or you make them do something they don't want to do and the mom's out there wincing because she can't do it herself. She can't make them do it. She doesn't necessarily want you to do it. And, but she thinks she wants it. And not all moms are like that because there are a lot of great supportive parents over the years and I have great ones right now. But you, you maybe get the point. Kids are getting younger and younger and younger. And kids, especially in the West, especially in the United States, have a million other activities, a million things going on. And, and I started putting stuff on YouTube and I started hearing from people from Ghana, people from Tanzania, people from Pakistan, people from Nepal living on $2 a day who have no running water in the house, no consistent electricity, but they got a cell phone and now they've got uh, Elon Musk's satellites and they're watching the videos and they've never had access to martial arts ever before, ever before because it was too expensive, only rich people in their country got to do it. And I'm talking about, you know, there are only a couple billion in the developing world, if that. The other five or six billion live, on, don't have what we have. And this is, this is the truth. And they, don't, they can't go to the martial arts school down the street in the uh, shopping mall, because there isn't one, right? And so I started getting videos and pictures from people, literally, in the forest, in the savannah, on, in the desert, in burnt, burnt out buildings in Afghanistan, spinning a makeshift bow staff from after watching one of my bow videos. That's why I do this. That's why I'm so passionate about it. And I know that if we really work on this, this, uh, thank you. That, that's, why, that's why I do it. And, and, and if, if we really work on building this global dojo, this global virtual dojo, and I'm not saying I'm the best at everything, I'm not. But I'm saying I have a lot to share. And I know you guys have a lot to share with each other and with me. And so we're learning from each other. And my passion, my taste for martial arts, and my reason, all the reasons come flooding back in. Oh, I was that kid who needed self-esteem. I was that kid who needed strength. I was that kid who needed to get strong in my mind and my body and my soul. And martial arts gave all that to me. I want to give it to you. I might not be able to give it to every kid in person here, and not just here, but where I was and everywhere else that I've been, because they got so much going on. They got so, and so many for, so many parents telling, sweetheart, you're working too hard. You're going to burn out, sweetheart. Don't. And you're thinking, don't tell him that. Let him figure out where his, or her, figure out where her limit is. Let her go after her hopes and dreams and burn themselves out on something. But because everybody else is saying, oh, it's, don't work so hard, don't work so hard. All right, off of my tangent, off of my soapbox, I just wanted to share that. And so again, when you guys uh, watch these videos and you share them, like, and all that stuff, that really keeps me going and that keeps this channel going. So it's, it's a joint effort. It's us. It's not me, it's us. Come in under the groin, and then boom, just straight in here. You can let go of one hand, smash him with that big fist or that big hammer. You can reach out, boom, and rake that straight across their face, across the shoulder for self-defense. That's what this is. From here, the hook is facing out. This is the third way you can use it for self-defense. One, pick it up, support it. There's that, uh, 
See that? Just holding that handle. Bam! That, all that energy and force from your body. It's force multiplier going through that tip, in through the face, in through the throat, in through the body, and then bam! Smashing there. Or bring it down here, or go down here. Or maybe they've fallen and you let go and you go down to the leg. Now, there are other things you can do with grabs and stuff, but think of the hook like this. This is a bonus move. This is number four. The bonus is going to be this crook right here. If you get one of these Cane Master style canes, that's that first link below. This, and I keep pushing, it should be obvious, right? I'm pushing you, go look at the links. Go to pasquinelli.com, look at that website because that helps me a little bit too. And it's just pennies. I mean, it's literally pennies, but they add up. Not a lot, <laughs> not nearly enough, but, um, but it, it's a process, it takes time. You gotta invest your time before you invest your money. But see that, that hard crook there? Think of raking that across for self-defense. The skin, the teeth come out, the nose comes off, the eye pops out for self-defense, the ear through those uh, tendons and ligaments and joints and uh, veins, through all that muscle, through that arm, ripping that stuff straight from the bone for self-defense, reaching up. So that's the fourth way, fourth way you use a cane for self-defense. You guys have been awesome. I gotta go teach another class for the 